All right, hello, welcome back everybody. PayPal and Patreon are down below if you want to support me, only do so if you actually can. So, it's finally time for another non-OPEC country's monthly production levels update. The final one we'll be getting for 2023. I apologize for the absence of these. The EIA, the agency that publishes this data, was doing a lot of website updates, so it got delayed. And also because of that, the graphs that get published on a different website along with this data have not all updated properly. So again, I'm sorry, I don't have any control over that. All right, so going right down the list, Azerbaijan peaked in oil production a while back at 1.1 million barrels per day, has since declined down to the mid 600,000s, would probably be around 640 right now. However, they do have a small field shut down for maintenance, but for the moment they're down around 620 because of that. And they... We're supposed to jump back just over 700 because they do have a 100,000 barrel per day field that will be coming online soon in some of the last untouched portions of their Caspian Sea waters. However, the well drilling and startup of that field has been delayed, so that field won't be coming into production until next year, by which time at their standard decline rate, Azerbaijan will be down closer to 600. So instead of just up over 700, it will be more likely the startup of that field will bump them back up to either rate right about 700 or just under 700,000 barrels per day. Next up, Argentina. Back in August, they were at around 620 or 630,000 barrels per day. However, they have continued climbing since then, adding more and more production from the Vaca Muerte shale. And now they're up, fluctuating around 680,000 barrels per day, which is right at the threshold of their domestic oil consumption levels and are on the verge of tipping over into becoming a net oil exporter again. Australia is still hovering around 300, just under 300, usually around 280 or so, which is where they came in once again. Brazil, meanwhile, has completed several production expansion operations, and as of the start of this month, has brought themselves up to 3.73 million barrels per day, their graph is also one of the ones that's definitely behind. And not all of that has been fully brought on yet. So by the end of this month, which will obviously be the end of this year as well, they should be right at a flat 3.8 million barrels per day. And then next year they have just about another 200,000 or so in terms of net additions. So they will go up to, by the end of next year, a total of about 4 million barrels per day flat. And then from there, they will decline a bit for a couple of years until the next round of new fields and massive production expansion operations begins in the later 2020s, which by the end of the 2020s should take Brazil, counting for the effect of background production declines as well, up to about 4.5 million barrels per day. Otherwise, were it not for the balancing fact of ongoing declines as well, all the additional production coming over the course of this decade would otherwise bring Brazil up to about 4.8 or 4.9. However, they should end this decade instead around 4.5 or maybe just under 4.5. Canada was down closer to 4.2 or 4.3 over the summer, especially because the warmer months are when most maintenance gets done. So a lot of stuff was shut down for maintenance and repairs after some wildfires as well. However, most of that is now done and Canada has jumped back up to just under 4.8 million barrels per day. And over the course of next year, they will be increasing net wise just a bit, right up to a flat 5 million barrels per day. PAD over in interior Africa has jumped back up from their otherwise decline. They were down in the 70s or 80s. However, they have now jumped back up to 125,000 barrels per day, finally adding one or a few new fields that were discovered a while ago, but hadn't been brought into production yet, as that is part of the Sahel region. And the Sahel region of northern interior Africa isn't exactly known for being all that politically stable. So stuff there tends to incur a lot of delays off and on. However, those small new fields are now in production, which has bumped Chad back up to now 125,000 barrels per day. China continues fluctuating around 4.1 or 4.2 or so, this time dropping down a bit to 4.1 million barrels per day. 
Meanwhile, of course, their domestic oil consumption levels in present day are up to 16 million. Colombia continues fluctuating around in the upper 700s for now, coming in once again around 780,000 barrels per day. And as of this year, they have decided to ban most possible future oil and gas exploration in the country. And their neighbor, Ecuador, after hitting their all-time peak of 550,000 barrels per day, once they added their last few fields a few years ago into production in the last bit of their territory that was unexplored, they have nothing left now, so they're only going to be going down. They have, through some enhanced recovery operations, managed to stall their decline for the last few months at around 470 or 480. However, their export margin is shrinking also, as their domestic oil consumption levels in present day are getting close to 300,000. Egypt is continuing their leisurely pace of adding new fields here and there at just enough of a grade to keep them hovering between 500 and 600,000, predominantly in the upper 500,000s, this time coming in once again around 570 or 580. Ghana continuing on their decline almost down to about 150,000 barrels per day now. However, they do have a new decently sized field coming online soon, either next year or 2025, I believe that should jump them up to between 250 and 300,000 barrels per day. Their neighbor right to the west, Côte d'Ivoire, is starting up production from a new field, the first portion of which is making them tip over into being a net exporter again, bringing them up to between 70 and 80,000 barrels per day as of the end of this year, which is just above their domestic consumption levels, which are usually between 60 and 70. And over the course of next year and 2025, they will be adding further field expansions to that field in development that should, in total, declines elsewhere included and factor in, bring them up to, at the end of the operations, about 150,000 barrels per day or so. Back over in South America, Guyana, one of the biggest up-and-coming, rapidly rising oil producers, was pumping about 410,000 barrels per day until just a few weeks back. Their third field started production as of the end of November. They were up to 460,000. And once that third field is in full output, within a couple months, they should be up between 600 and 650,000 barrels per day. India has continued declining down to right around 600,000 barrels per day. Meanwhile, their domestic oil consumption levels in present day are up around 5.5 million. However, they should be jumping up closer to 700,000 over the next number of weeks or a couple months as they just started production from a moderate-sized field offshore of their Gujarat state that should be jumping them up by about 80,000 barrels per day. Indonesia, once a decent producer a while ago, holding a plateau of around 1.5 million barrels per day for several decades. However, they reached the end of their oil field's ability to maintain that and have since been in terminal decline, now down under 600,000 barrels per day. Meanwhile, the country's ever-growing oil consumption rate domestically is now around 2 million barrels per day. And while they still do have a decent bit of their territory primarily offshore that is still unexplored, because of the way everything is set up, topography, geology, and everything, what is there in their offshore territory is most likely to contain predominantly natural gas. Kazakhstan has been maintaining themselves around 1.9 to just under 2 million barrels per day. Malaysia continuing their wobbly decline, fluctuating between 450 and 500,000 barrels per day. Previously, for the last number of years, being closer to 500 now starting to have most of their numbers come in closer to 450, this time in particular coming in at 454,000 barrels per day. Mexico, after declining all the way down to 1.6, has managed to push themselves back up to between 1.9 and 2 million barrels per day over the last number of years, and they have a number of things lined up for the remainder of this decade, adding some decently sized new fields that were discovered years ago, but they just hadn't done anything with up to this point. And as those are brought on, their numbers combined with decline rates even it out to where Mexico should, for the remainder of the 2020s, hold themselves decently level around this area. Niger, right next to Chad in interior Africa, in the Sahel region, is now an oil producer, bringing on their first ever field that was discovered a number of years ago, but nothing was done with it off and on 
because again, the Sahel region is notoriously unstable. And so they are jumping into production with about 100,000 barrels per day. And as usual with a field's first startup, that should hold for a year or two before a slow decline begins, then slopes down into a more traditional one. Norway continuing to hold around the 2 million barrels per day that they've brought themselves back up to from the one and a half that they had declined down to before. Oman was holding around 1.05 million barrels per day. However, under the new enhanced OPEC production cuts, although Oman is not part of OPEC, they're part of the extended OPEC plus group. Oman agreed to cut back by about 50,000. So they're dropping themselves down to a flat 1 million. Qatar is continuing to hold their 1.32 million barrel per day plateau. Russia announcing further production cuts again, this time taking themselves down from 9.2 down to flat 9 million barrels per day. Before invading Ukraine, they were producing about 10.8. And then after invading Ukraine, they faced rapid customer absence, which forced them to drop down to about 10. And I said back then, in spring of that year, 2022, as that was when most of the major global oil industries left Russia, that there would be a lag or a delay of about one year before a similar post-USSR collapse production downturn would begin for Russia's oil production. And right as we were about to hit one year after that, before spring of this year, Russia announced that they were going to start enacting production cuts. At first back then, 500,000, so from 10 million down to 9.5. Then at the end of this summer, they announced a further 300,000 down to 9.2. And now, as part of the OPEC Plus agreement, they are going further down from 9.2 down to a flat 9 million barrels per day. Now, I did expect, as I said back then, they would do stuff like this and frame it as, you know, market stabilization, or in their case, as they've said a few times, lots of revenge against the West. But it would really be artificial cutting actions to conceal the otherwise would-be visible downturn of their production capability. Although they have been going faster than I otherwise thought they would, as assuming it would play similarly to the post-USSR collapse, I expected a top capacity loss of 500,000 barrels per day over the first year from which it would begin, which would be from spring of this year to spring of next year, and then a 1 million barrel per day or so, or just a bit less capacity loss each year thereafter, until you hit the floor that is formed by the remaining production coming from conventional non-Arctic and non-permafrost fields, which at this point, that production floor would be somewhere around like four or four and a half million barrels per day. So by now, around the end of this year, it's not even spring of next year yet. So theoretically, their capacity decline should only be down to around like still over 10.3, like 10.4 million barrels per day or so. But they keep cutting and cutting, including large actions of their own. So their oil field and production functionality might actually be downturning inside faster than I was expecting it to. South Sudan being left with about 200,000 barrels per day of oil production after they and Sudan split has declined since then over the last decade or so down to about 150, which is where they're still at now. Thailand was maintaining a wobbly plateau in the mid 200,000s for about a decade and a half. However, they've reached the end of their field's ability to maintain that and have been slipping down now hovering around 140 or so. Turkmenistan peaked in the upper 200,000s and has since declined down to 191, where they came in once again. The UK, long fallen from their North Sea heights and not doing constants further new oil and gas exploration like Norway is. Granted, the UK doesn't have as much remaining offshore territory like Norway does. So after bringing themselves back up to about 1 million briefly, they've been on the decline again for the last number of years, down to averaging around 700,000, sometimes closer to 750 or 800. This time, though, coming in all the way down around 580. The U.S. at the beginning of this year I expected would reach or exceed 12.8, and the U.S. did indeed do so reaching all the way up to 13.2 million barrels per day and holding that for a number of weeks until just with this most recent update, they have dropped back down a bit to 13.1 million barrels per day instead. And most of the new production coming online now and over the next number of years, which will be petering out and be getting weighed down by declines, 
Most of that new production has started to become and will be offshore stuff in the Gulf that is waiting to come online and stuff back up home in my state, Alaska, where I lived up until 2020 when 2020 happened. And I was unfortunately not one of the people who got to recover from 2020 happening. So I've been stranded outside of my preferred home since then. But stuff up there and stuff in the Gulf is primarily where the additional production is coming from now as the shale has mostly started to reach its peaking limits. So accounting for declines and the coming additions and the time frame of the coming additions, U.S. production should be leveling out roughly here, with there being actually a renewed chance that it might touch 14, but I still feel it more likely it's going to level out here in the 13s for a couple of years before beginning to slip its way down for its second and final terminal decline, and Vietnam held a plateau in the mid 300,000s, but has reached the end of their field's ability to maintain that. The fields, the fields in the portions of their waters that have been explored up to this point, where they haven't been doing too much offshore oil and gas exploration over the last decade or so, because China has been disputing so much of their territorial waters by building artificial islands in the South China Sea. So Vietnam hasn't gotten to do too much stuff as of late which has seen them decline down to now about 170,000 barrels per day. All right, that's the end of this one. Sorry it was so long. Thank you, everybody, for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. PayPal and Patreon are down there if you want to support me. Only do so if you actually can. Links to Google Docs are in the description, where I have data compilations of all kinds of energy and resource stuff, maps, demographic charts, all the different kinds of things I figured you guys would want to look at and have compiled in one place. So you can look at any of those for free anytime you want. A link to my catch channel will be in the top pinned comment as well. And may God bless and protect all of you. I will see you all around next time.